Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a bedroom using one point perspective. So I'm starting with a box here. This box is the back wall of the room that we are looking at. Um, it can be any size, it can be in any placement on the page. Um, I'm just choosing to kind of put it in the middle so I have room for everything. Um, but just depending on your point of view that you're drawing, it could be bigger, smaller, or anywhere else. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is connect the corners here to kind of form a really light X. And that's going to help me kind of find the center of this wall. So that center right there is going to be our vanishing point. Your vanishing point does not have to be in the center of your square, um, but it's just kind of a generic way of doing it. So I'm going to erase the rest of these lines because I don't need them anymore. Okay, and from here I am going to create the edges where the walls meet the floor and the ceiling. So basically all I'm going to do is connect the vanishing point to the corner again, and then I'm going to draw my line outwards on every side. So notice how I didn't draw the lines back on the center. Um, that's because obviously the corners where the ceiling meets the wall is going to end on this wall anyway. So we have that point where the three come together everywhere. And that is basically just going to stay empty except for whatever's on that wall. All right, so now that we have the walls in place, we are going to start adding things to our room. Um, so first of all, we could start with a bed. So maybe we'll have the bed up against this back wall here so it's coming out towards us. And what I'm going to do first is just maybe start with a headboard or something and that is going to be up against the wall. So if our bed, say, is starting right here, like this is our mattress, and that's the thickness of the mattress, I'm just going to start right there as kind of an estimate. And then from here, I'm going to draw my headboard going upwards, and, you know, whatever kind of headboard you want to make. Okay, so since the headboard itself is sitting right over the top of the vanishing point. We're not really going to see like the top edge of it. We might see a little bit right here, just a little corner of it, but otherwise we aren't going to see any of the other sides because it's kind of behind it, so we wouldn't be able to see it. So now what we have is the mattress. Um, so it's going to be coming out towards us. So I drew this light rectangle. So these edges, these three edges, we aren't going to see anymore once I start drawing the converging lines. Um, I'm just drawing this box here to kind of give myself an idea of where the mattress itself is sitting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the corner of the bed to the vanishing point here, and I'm going to draw a converging line outwards. I'm not going to draw it super far because otherwise we'd have like a really huge bed. Um, a really long one and that would look pretty funny. So I'm just going a little bit past the line of the floor here and basically since this edge is facing us right here I'm just gonna draw a rectangle because that's basically all we're going to see from the bed. And then we're gonna connect this bottom right here so now we have a mattress, um, and if you wanted, you could always start your mattress with this rectangle first and then move backwards in space too. Um, it's really up to you. If the bed were over here, we would start with the side of the mattress with a rectangle and then do our converging lines to make the top lines of it. So from here, what I'm going to do is maybe I'm just going to draw like 
the little feet of the bed. And then we can add in pillows and blankets and any of the stuff that we want to add on there. So the pillows themselves aren't really going to be in perspective. They're just going to be sitting here. And then if we give a little volume and softness to the bed, it's going to give it more of kind of a feel like there's a blanket sitting on it. Because if there is a blanket on it, it's going to not be quite so hard. There's going to be some volume to it. So now that I've drawn that in, I can go in and kind of erase some of these harder lines. And then we can take this hard line right here and just kind of, I'm going to soften this one as well. So I'll erase it and then just kind of give an indication of a line that's not necessarily straight. So that's going to give it a feel of more of a softer blanket in place. All right, so there's a bed. Um, how about we draw some other things? So perhaps a dresser, windows, doors, that sort of thing. Um, so first of all, say we're going to draw a dresser. Um, we'd be looking at it, say if it's against this wall here, we'd be looking at it from the side. And so what I am going to do is I'm going to start by drawing a rectangle that's going straight up and down. And remember this line right here, this converging line is where the wall meets the floor. So the rectangle needs to be on the floor. If it stops up here, it's gonna be on the wall. So it's not actually going to be like sitting where it's supposed to. So I'm going to put it right on this corner here and then I'll erase this part of the wall since the dresser would be in the way there. So from here, again, we're going to do our converging lines. So we will connect the corners of our object to the vanishing point. And to save yourself some erasing, you don't need to draw all the way to the vanishing point as long as you know you're lined up here. You can stop wherever. And since we're just making a dresser, it's not super long. So I'm just going to stop a little early. And then I see that because this rectangle is below the vanishing point, I will see the top of it. And then from here, we're going to create our parallel lines to create the side of the dresser. So I'm going to start by lining up my ruler with the edge of this and I'm going to slide it straight back so I want to be careful not to tip it sideways because our brain wants us to turn our ruler like it says oh it's going at this angle but it's really not it's actually straight up and down so we're going to pull straight across so it's parallel and I'm just going to get to the edge of the first line here and I will draw my side of my dresser. And I can erase this line here. From here we're going to create the top of the dresser and the back edge. So again I'm going to line my ruler up with this edge and slide it straight back. So again careful not to tip. Go straight up and down. This should be perfectly horizontal and we will create our edge there. So now we have kind of the basis of a dresser, a really simple one. I think I might give it some feet or a little more interest here. So the bottoms of the feet here are actually going to be converging lines as well. Just something to be aware of. All right, so from here, now we can make the drawers of the dresser. And so the sides of it are going to be vertical. They'll be parallel to these sides. 
and then the tops and bottoms of each drawer will be a converging line. So I'm going to start by just making a few sets of parallel lines here to indicate the top or the sides of the drawers. All right, so now I have just an indication here. And from this point, I can connect the top and bottom lines to my vanishing point. All right, and from here, I can create my parallel lines to make the other side of the drawers. If I wanted, I could make some little pulls on here. Um, maybe just something simple. So the tops of these would be converging lines as well. Let's start with our window. Perhaps I think what I'll do is indicate the height of the window first by drawing just the back side of it. And from here, I will create a couple converging lines. So I meet up at the vanishing point and draw outwards to create the width of the window. And then to create the other side, we just need to stay parallel. I made this a little bit bigger, so I'll just connect those. All right, so right now we just have a flat space. So, you know, if we had a poster or a painting on the wall, it would look like that. But a window has some extra stuff on there. So perhaps we have like the window trim that we need to add. So from here, I'm just going to add on a little bit around the window. And we know that the window trim has some thickness to it. So basically, I'm going to create just a really small little rectangle right here. Because we would see that flat side straight on, just like we saw the dresser. So now it's sticking out of the wall. We also know that the windows tend to kind of sit inwards. There's usually a window sill. So if we look at, say, this dresser here, the top sides are horizontal. So what I'm going to do is just create from this corner and this corner, it's going inwards, so we're looking into the window. I'm going to create another rectangle right here. So we're looking at this one straight on. So it's the same as this, we're looking straight on. And from this corner and this corner, we're going to have two more converging lines. And that's going to create the interior of that windowsill. So the key to understanding perspective and how to apply it to a drawing is to really just observe the world around you. So like, look at your own bedroom. What what edges and sort of like directional lines do you see happening in your own room? Um, so now we need to draw kind of the window pane itself. Maybe we could do a fancy window with multiple panes. So the one thing we're noticing is that anything that is coming towards us in space is going to be a converging line. And anything that's facing us in space is going to be just a rectangle. Um, and the more that you really just look at the spaces that you intend to draw, the more you're going to start seeing it that way. So the key to perspective is really just learning how to see and how to kind of perceive the spaces that you're in and, and kind of apply the skills that you're learning to your eyes. So it's not just a drawing thing, it's a looking thing. So the majority of learning how to draw is really just learning how to see All right, so now I've got a little window. Maybe there's some trees in the background. We're up on the second floor, so we got some tall trees here. 
I'll pretend like there's still leaves on the tree right now. Oh, that's nice. Okay, um, how about on the other side of our room we create a door. So we gotta get into our bedroom somehow. So let's do that. Um, so the same way we made the window, we are going to create the door frame first by drawing our parallel line indicating the back. Then we'll have a converging line to create the top of the door. And from here, we're going to make another parallel line, so directly vertical, going straight up and down. So there's the basic door frame. Now, if we wanted to have the door being opened at all, um, that's going to kind of change how things look. I think before I draw the door, I'm going to draw um, the trim around the door. So remember the edge of it that's facing us is going to be just a simple rectangle. I'm going to have the trim kind of go out a little past this edge here because there is some thickness to it that sticks out from the door. And then we'll see the same sort of rectangle on the inside here. And that just indicates the thickness of the door frame. So um, from here, we can draw the door. And so maybe the door opens outwards into the hallway. So what we can do here is maybe it's open all the way. So the door would just be like another rectangle going out this way, like so. And then I can erase this line here because that indication where the wall and the floor meet doesn't exist right there. It continues on into the next room. So now that this is open, we would see the underside of the wood frame here. All right, so now we have sort of some thickness to our door frame. And the doorknob, and maybe we would see like a little bit of it because the door itself would not be completely showing on our way out. Maybe just to finish off, we have some pictures on the wall or something. So again, um, I like to start with just one edge and then create my converging lines to give me an idea of where I should be drawing. And again, when we make the sides, gotta be straight up and down. I'm gonna see just a little bit of the side of it sticking out there. All right, I think from here, I'm just gonna speed some things up and then just add little details to make this a little more lived in, if you will. But stay tuned and thanks for watching.